Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new changes in Command 1147.40. Uh, there's been basically two major changes, uh, plus a whole stack of uh, pretty handy dandy little updates, kind of quality of life changes. But I thought we'd look at one right away. If you uh, take your lovely keyboard and press Ctrl and K, you'll notice this little finger appears now. Ta-da! You can now draw areas using a shortcut key, which is actually super duper handy. Now, if you want to get rid of that area, Control delete poof, and it's gone. Uh, the second thing we want to take a look at is actually a little bit more complicated, and that's going to be the fact that now radars have a vertical limitation as far as uh, what they're able to see. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go go get some Microsoft Paint here so we can get a little fancy. So I got my little airplane here. Again, this is my uh, incredibly ugly airplane. It doesn't have to work. It just has to look roughly like an airplane. I got a little radar in the nose. It has the ability now to only see approximately 30 degrees. And you're sitting there going, well, that could be a little bit problematic. Oh, uh, yeah, it could be problematic depending on how you deploy the platform. Now, if I have an airplane that's uh, basically cold altitude, we'll be able to pick it up until it's pretty much right on top of us. If I have an aircraft that is significantly higher, you'll notice we'll never be able to tech detect it until it gets uh, pretty much right on top of us, then we can physically see it. You also know if we have something that is incredibly low, we're going to have a heck of a time detecting it as well, because it'll now get underneath this cone. Now, you're probably sitting there saying, now, what does this look like mathematically? Well, let's take a look. It looks a little bit like this. So what I did is I got over to my Google Sheets and I said, well, I can do some trigonometry. I'm not so rusty at that. What would happen if we try to create something that could actually determine how effective this is? So I said, let's do it. So it looks to me like if we're at a 36,000 feet and we have a range of let's call it 10 nautical miles, anything that is at 100 feet or 200 feet would be completely invisible. Likewise, if we're at five nautical mile difference, uh, you can see here that this range of not being able to see things gets even stronger. All the way down to 12,000 feet, we're not gonna be able to see anything because we can't stick the radar down that low. Now, I know some of you are DCS fans and immediately go, well, you just jump just the elevation knob. Uh, you're, you're not wrong, but the way that they're actually choosing to model it in such a sense is that we don't have access to that elevation elevation control. Whereas if you had something like a MiG-21 or a MiG-19, you really can't adjust the, radi the uh, elevation of our radiation of our radar. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in a practical sense. So in the game, I've got myself my F-15A. Um, you're immediately going, whoa, 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 wait a minute, you cheated. Uh, yeah, I did cheat. Um, the first thing I did is I deleted the eyeballs. Uh, if I left the eyeballs in, he'd unfortunately be able to see the targets and not the radar's effect of the targets. And the other thing I did is I took the ANAPG-63 here and I tweaked it so it had a little bit wider range. Now keep in mind that these new rules do not apply to radars that are actively scanned or passively scanned. This particular one is good old-fashioned boring. So we're going to go ahead and fly around a little bit here. I'll just see if we can pick up anything. Oh, pause. Looks like we picked up the whole neighborhood. So I'm going to go ahead and slow myself down a little bit. Continue. So the first thing is I have a target at 45,000 feet at a range of, uh, what is that? Um, let's go ahead and click on this guy right here. We got a range of 42 nautical miles. Over here, we got 44. We got a guy at 25,000 feet, and we're able to see every single one of them. That makes perfect sense. If we were to go back to our math chart, you realize, oh, that's not really going to be much of an issue for us unless they start getting a little bit closer to us. Well, let's go speed up time a little bit and see what happens here. A little bit closer, a little bit closer, over me. All right, so at this particular point, now these two guys, 45,000 feet and 36,000 feet, are getting darn close. I think uh, right at this time, they're 6.5 nautical miles away. Remember, our calculations said this won't really be an issue until they're pretty much right on top of us. So let's uh, one, two, skip a few a little bit, see what happens when they get a little bit closer. This 45,000 feet is getting definitely close. Of course, the co-altitude will never have an issue. Oh, and he's gone. What? Check it out. He's gone. We can't see him anymore with our radar because the angle between us in our actual transmitter and he are way, way too high. Whereas the guy at the co-altitude, no problem. So let's go ahead and ha -choo. Oh, Whoa, sorry about that. Oh, 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 whoa. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab this guy and take a look at this guy. He's doing 25,000 feet. Now keep in mind, 25,000 minus 36,000 is 11,000. 25, 45,000 minus 36,000 is only 9,000. So hypothetically, this guy should disappear off of our radar scope much sooner than the one previously. So let's scoot, 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 and let's uh, see exactly what happens when it happens. Ready? Poof. And he's gone. You can see that that distance was, let's call it about 2.74 nautical miles. So you can see that difference in altitude made a really, really big difference on the fact we can no longer track, which also means we can't guide weapons onto that particular chap right there. Let's go ahead and come over here. We have one at 12,000 feet. Gone. Completely blamo gone. Let me back up a little bit. That wasn't fair. Uh, let's see what happens this time. 12,000 feet, and you're about to drop off the radar, and you're gone at six nautical miles. Let's continue cruising along here. Cru cruising wrong, just to prove our calculations are accurate here. I expect this guy to poop. There he goes. That was at 10 nautical miles. Holy smokes. That's like danger range. That's like dogfight distance range here. Coming over here, we got the chap at uh, 2,000 feet here. This one's about average. Gone. 
And we have this one probably at 1,000 feet, and he's going to blink off probably right around, I think, 7 out, oh, and he's gone. And you can see that all of these targets now are still physically there. It's just we can't look down with our radars enough in order to see them. Now, some of you are immediately saying, well, is there such thing as an altitude you should put your planes at to optimize this? Well, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at it mathematically. All right, let's see what happens here. So let's say that we choose to fly at an altitude of 18,000 feet. What does that do for us? Well, if you take a look here, it basically makes it so things that are very close and very far, now we can't see them. Basically, we've um, taken our little uh, cone of I can see it, and we've reduced its altitude significantly. Now, what if we say, well, we'll put our radar down at 1,000 feet. What does that do for us? Well, if you actually take a look, it does a really bang up job of limiting these low altitude chaps. But at the same time, is anything over 45,000, you know, like F-35 territory, these folks are not even visible out to 10 nautical miles. Now, some of you are going, well, let's just take 45,000 divided by two. All right, let's see what happens. Yep, all you did is you took that little zone of I can see it and you've just shifted it back and forth. Whereas at the end of the day, you still have basically the same amount of squares that you're not going to be able to see in. So this goes to show how tricky this can be and how you really need to know the altitude of your opponents to be able to safely place, especially your airborne radars. Keep in mind our radars that are on the ground have a brand new set of problems. You'll notice that once the targets get very, very close, they completely disappear. Now, I want to throw out two quick comments before I leave everyone, and that's the fact that an ASA and a PESA radar, this actively and versus passively scanned array, don't have this limitation. They can see pretty much as far as they can see, no problem. Keep in mind, gain limits still apply, though. The other thing you want to watch out for is look-down, shoot-down radars. Not every radar is a look-down, shoot-down radar. What does that mean? Well, if somebody got really smart after a while and realized that if you take the Doppler shift of something you detect, that probably means it's moving, which means it's probably something you're interested in. That was a way that they could look down with a radar so they could actually see things and kind of differentiate it from any sort of ground clutter that was below them. Not every radar platform has that capability. So your attempt to put the radar higher in an effort to be able to kind of see that wider scheme gets lost even worse because anything below itself simply loses out. Now let's take a look at the worst case scenario for a second here. Let's go ahead and load it up. Oh, this is new. They made it all nice and big now. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, switch back to the other team. Now this is where it gets even trickier. Delete you. Oh, ah, that's right. They broke the delete key in this version. We fix, we fix. Boop, boop, boop. Push the button right there. Perfect. Let's get ourselves a Hawkeye. And we'll get a really, really old one. Let's get a 1974. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Go ahead and point this guy in the general direction of my C-141s. He's got that massive radar. It should take a, basically a millisecond to pick all those guys up, which he does. Now, there's some ambiguity there, but nothing terrible. And we're basically just going to have this guy kind of cruise along here, a little closer to the action. No problem detecting. Now, like I said, there's some ambiguity. This is an old style system. It's a very, very long wavelength. And we're starting to get the little jitters. And we're starting to get the little jitters over here as well. Notice we're able to see things behind us. Now notice, as we're cruising along here, there it is, we lost our first contact. So now, even though we're looking in 360 degrees, we're having a brand new problem, and that's the fact that now we can't see things in a big ring around us, even though we have a 360 degree clearance. So now the altitude at which you put this aircraft suddenly becomes that much more important. Enjoy.